Hey everybody, this is Brian at the Edison Pen Company. Hope you guys are doing really well. Um, I haven't done any periscopes for a while and I feel kind of bad. We had a very, very busy uh, July and also a very busy uh, August due to the DC Pen Show. Our heads are finally above water and I can get to work on some of these things that I've had on my repair bench for a while. So I thought I'd share a little bit about how we approach um, uh, repairing a pump filler. Uh, someone's asking new filling system. Stay tuned. I'd like to think within two or three months. It's going slower than what I thought. So um, as I do this repair, I'll kind of pan the camera down. I may not be able to see every comment. So I'll do my best to watch what's happening in the comments, but I also need to, you know, kind of do this repair at the same time. So I'll kind of balance what I can. All right. So let me pan down a little bit. And uh, what we have is a Huron. And it's a gorgeous Huron, one that I'm pretty proud of. It has a nice gold snake clip on it. It has a beautiful Richard Bender flex nib. And it's a pump filler. So you unscrew this back here, and here's the pump mechanism. But maybe you can see there's a little issue there. There's some ink that is obviously leaking out the back. Now, sometimes uh, this is a cup that is detached but many times it's due to an ink that is a little bit uh, harsh, one that probably shouldn't be used in this pen. I won't know until I get it open, but uh, let me get started on this. I'll set the cap aside, I'll set the nib aside, and we're working on just the barrel because there's a leak in the back of this, and my assumption is that somehow the diaphragm is depleted. I don't know how or why, but I'll find out in just a little bit. Uh, do we still sell the Bender Flex Nibs? Yes, we sure do. Go to edisonpen.com and you can see more details. And the Beatles rule. Thank you. I agree. All right, so let's get this mechanism out of here. I have this tool that is specific for removing this mechanism. It threads on here. And then I have this, this wrench, a six-point clamping wrench, if you will. I can get a really good grip with this and remove the mechanism. I can see already, you know, there's obviously a leak of some kind and the brass is a little bit tarnished. So, you know, this mechanism has seen better days. I'll try and pull this out right now, but it might need a little persuasion from the other side. All right, here we go. Okay, the, the, the sack has basically melted, or the diaphragm has melted. If you take a look at this, I think you can see how nasty and sticky that is. This is latex that has just been destroyed by a harsher ink. Um, and here I can just, you can see how sticky this is. It's, it's almost difficult to get off my finger. But we have solvents that take care of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the diaphragm I'm going to set this mechanism that looks pretty nasty aside, and then I'm going to, another day, we'll clean this up, probably put it in our tumbler, get it all cleaned up and we can reuse it. But for now, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to get a new mechanism. Right here we go. All right. But before we do that, we got to clean out this barrel. This barrel has a lot going on inside when it comes to that nasty, sticky, melted latex in there. And the best solvent for that is naphtha. So um, I will take a brush. There's my wife next to me. She's cleaning a pen. There you go. So I will take a brush. Give me one second. I got to find it. Um, where are my brushes? There we go. And I'm going to get the head of the brush into this naphtha. And then once I get this into the pen, this solvent does a great job of removing all that nasty, melted uh, latex. Now, it's not dangerous to acrylic at all. That's the beauty of this. You know, it, you know, you could, like lacquer thinner or acetone would certainly get rid of this, but lacquer thinner and acetone is not a good idea to put on acrylic, but naphtha is a good solvent for this melted latex without damaging the pen in any way. So now I'll take a Q-tip 
or a swab, and kind of go in here and just see if there's any remnants. Usually if anything is in there besides ink, it'll show up on the Q-tip, and all I'm showing is a little bit of ink in here. So from here, normally I'd go to my sink for this, but I don't want to tote my camera all around. So I have naphtha inside this pen, so I really gotta get that cleaned out. So I'll take this syringe and just get the pen all nicely flushed out, any solvent that might still be in there. And then I'm gonna clean it out with a paper towel. Stand by for the Morgan Blow Filler to start breaking bad. I don't know that I get it. Stand by for the Morgan Blow Filler. I love breaking bad. So now I'm going to take a paper towel, kind of roll up one end, and get it in here to clean out all of the water, or even maybe left leftover naphtha, but by now that should be out of there really well. Hang on, i got to grab something and my tripod is in the way. Alright, so I'm going to go back in here and just do the same thing, just kind of investigate. Oh, location shots and ABQ. Oh, that's right. I remember. It was, uh, I, I don't remember your name or your, your first name or your last name, but I believe that you had some location shots with our pens in Albuquerque. Is that right? Anyways, yeah, I believe that's, that's, that's what it was. Thank you, because those were fun. Everybody that works here at our facility are huge Breaking Bad fans, and every time those photos came in, we just had a blast checking those out. So, yeah, you can send some more. We love that. All right, so... The barrel's all cleaned out, and it's ready for a new mechanism. This is the clean mechanism that's right off of our uh, machines. Uh, what you making? We're not making anything. We're actually doing a repair on a pump filler, fountain pen. Um, so this is the replacement diaphragm. The one that was melted obviously looked really nasty. This is the replacement. What I need to do is cut this to the right length. And don't ask me what that is, because I always just go by eye. Now, what we need to do is mount this diaphragm into the cup of the mechanism. We're going to do that with a special tool. This tool goes in here and grabs the pellet. There's a pellet inside these diaphragms, which you can see is kind of showing itself through the latex right now. And then when you push this pellet into the cup, it's stretched enough that when you release it, the latex itself being flexible keeps it all inside there, all right? So now the diaphragm is attached. Now how are we gonna get this to unroll? Because now we need the diaphragm to be completely inverted so it will function the way that it should. Well, we do that with talcum powder, a uh, talcum powder. We use a dry that as a talcum powder as a dry lubricant. So I take the other end of this tool and I've got some talcum powder on it. If I didn't have this, then this, this latex would be too sticky. This acts as a dry lubricant. So I can put this over top of the tool, apply a little bit more talcum powder to the outside, what, what, what will be the inside, but is now the outside, and that way when I do this, the dry lubricant will not allow the latex to stick to itself, and I can unroll it onto itself like this, and then there we go. So that that diaphragm is now basically inverted onto itself, and now you can see how the diaphragm, what it does, it doesn't stretch, it basically unrolls. And that's how the pump filler creates compression and vacuum inside the pen, which leads to the pen, um, well, I'm sorry, which leads to the filling system filling and emptying. That's how this pump filler creates the compression and vacuum. So that's all together. Now it's time to mount it back inside the barrel. And we are going to use another lubricant, but we're going to use a wet lubricant rather than a dry lubricant. And here we are. I'm going to apply lubricant to the edge here where it will insert into the pen. I'm also going to apply lubricant back here at the base. The reason that this base should be lubricated is that this is the point that the pen will seal off. This, this point of contact right here is where the latex will touch the inner profile of the barrel and create a perfect seal. So, got that done. Let's put this into the barrel. So 
so far looking good. I'm going to screw it in about as far as I can with my fingers, which won't be very far, honestly. And then I'm going to finish it up with the same wrench that I used to remove this. So this tool with the six point wrench, I'm going to tighten this up, not too much, just to where it's snug and I know I've got a good seal. All right, so now this mechanism is mounted in here. Uh, you make it look so easy. Well, <laughs> thank you. I've I've done this over and over and over and over. If you if you have any questions on this, I'll be sure I'll be happy to answer them. But also keep in mind what I'm doing is just basically the same thing that we would do, or any pen repair person would do with a vacuumatic. Remember that our pump filler is inspired by the Parker vacuumatic, and we use the same diaphragms that they would too. So essentially what, what I'm doing here is the same thing that a vintage repair person would do to a vacuumatic. So now at this point, the blind cap will screw back on. And I, don't, I have no idea if my camera will pick this up, but this blind cap needs to be completely, completely perfect. Yeah, there, maybe on this edge you can see it. The seam between the blind cap and the barrel is not perfect. If you run your fingers over this, you can feel a bump. Well, that's not okay, we gotta fix that. I won't cover that part on camera, uh, but what we do is we take this to the lathe, file it, sand it, and make that seam perfect again. And once that's done, we have the pen finished. Now, the only thing really left beyond that would be to test the filling system, make sure there's no leaks. You know, I'll do submersion tests, compression tests, vacuum tests to make sure that this seal is perfect, and then the pen is back in perfect working order after we do that. So, you kinda get the idea how this repair works. Um, like I said, it's not finished, but I, I won't take the time on Periscope to, you know, tote my camera over to the lay and every place else to get that done. So, anyways, let me know if anybody has any questions. That's basically it, how we repair a pump filler, uh, which, you know, it's not too uncommon for inks. You know, uh, we, we do warn people about certain inks are not okay to use and certain ones are not, uh, or certain ones are, and yet still we get, you know, people that want to experiment, but, uh, and any, any filling system that utilizes a latex uh, diaphragm, a latex sac, you really need to use a little bit of care about uh, what inks you're going to use. Our pump fillers, our pneumatic fillers, our bulb fillers, and also any vintage pen that uses a latex diaphragm, usually, I mean, I'm not going to just say that these brands stink, because there isn't one brand out there where everything is horrible in their lineup when it comes to latex, you know what I mean? But generally speaking, if it's a highly, highly, highly saturated color, like a ridiculously, you know, saturated blue, reds are really bad too, um, pinks, uh, you know, if it's a highly saturated color, the way that those colors come to be is by a heavy dye load, and when you have a very heavy dye load, it just doesn't work well with latex. It tends to literally melt it. So, you know, we do give warnings, but I don't know, every so often we get someone that uses an ink that uh, doesn't agree with our latex set up with the filling system and we can do a repair. And we're always happy to do it. There's never any charge. You know, if you look at our guarantee, we always support our products, you know. Uh, so we're always happy to take care of that. So that's how we do the repair on a, on a Menlo or a pump filler uh, diaphragm. Let me know if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, I'll probably sign out here pretty soon. I'll also post this to YouTube. Um, uh, is the group buy coming? Yes, very soon, actually. Um, I'm waiting on one thing to arrive. Basically, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. We're going to run it a little bit different than previous years. I think that those of you that participated or followed the group by last year, we had a, uh, basically, we, we, I think that we announced it in September or October, and then the buying period started at that point. We bought the materials a month later and got rolling. And I said, uh, is there, I'm, I'm sorry, a, after I finish this, ask the questions again. I'll try and remember. Is there a placement for latex? I'll try and get to that in a second, but let me finish this. Um, so at the end of October, we started on this project, and then our Christmas and holiday uh, season slammed us, and I told everybody that we would deliver the pens in two to four months, and we took all of those four months to get that finished, and I really don't like doing that. I like to under-promise and over-deliver. So if I say two to four months, I want it done in one or two months, quite honestly. So I wasn't real cool with that. 
We're going to run it a little bit differently this year, all right? I won't tell you what the pen is, but I will tell you this. When the pens are basically made right now, they're done. We're going to have a finite number of pens, and we are going to announce. And once we announce, there's no buying period, there's no waiting period. The pens are done, you place your order, and we ship. So that makes me feel a lot better rather than making promises that I'm pretty sure I can keep, but maybe I can't. And that, you know, we were on the edge last year of not fulfilling that promise, and I really felt bad about it. So this year, I mean, we might be limiting the number of pens that we actually sell, but I feel better knowing that, look, you know, we're not going to risk breaking a promise to our customers. So they're done. They're finished. I can't tell you what it is. It's top secret. I'm waiting on one thing to arrive. Then we're ready to announce. It's coming from Germany. So it might be, you know, two weeks, it might be four weeks, I'm not quite sure. So I would say within six weeks easily, limited edition, group by pen. Um, someone had asked earlier, is there a replacement for latex? Yes, there is, but it's not always applicable. There are PVC sacks that you can use, but there's none that are made as a diaphragm. There's also silicone sacks that can be used. Again, none that can be used as a diaphragm, none that are shaped to be a diaphragm. Uh, you know, there's sacks, but not that shape with the pellet that we need for this pump filler. I have considered looking into finding someone to manufacture a PVC or a latex, I'm sorry, a PVC or a silicone diaphragm, uh, but it's been tough to figure out. But I do have a little solution and it might be announced here, hopefully within, I don't know, three, four months, I, we'll, we'll find out. But I do have a solution, I, it's a good question, is there a replacement for latex? Yes, but not in the case of vacuumatic, of pump fillers, of diaphragms, all right? So, unless there's any other questions, I'll probably sign out here. Like I said, I'll publish this to YouTube later on if people wanna check it out there as well. Um, but if there's nothing else, I appreciate you guys watching me today. Uh, now that uh, we're not nearly as, as crazy busy as we used to be, I'll try my best to do some more periscoping. I think that people might enjoy seeing this, you know, behind the scenes and how we approach things. And, and quite honestly, I wish that we did more and more of it. But, you know, literally, it's, uh, there's four of us full time. We probably need to hire another one here soon. Um, and right now, the way things are, we're usually really, really busy every day. So I'll do my best to do more social media, some more periscoping. But anyways, everybody, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email them or uh, let me know. Take care. See ya.